go and stay in the village and live the village life. So you might see something else right now, but I, I have lived the village life. I've been to farms, I've worked with the farm workers, I've put tubers of yam on my head and come back home mm. and have a crick in my neck. I've done all that. And I go to the village regularly. I see the life they lead. It's not a bad life. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's a difficult life, but it's an interesting life. It it's, it's can be done. So if the grassroots are coming to me, it's because they need it. And those are the people we should reach out to. Because, you know, when you go to the villages mm. and you see the sense of hope, hopelessness and you look at the children and say, will they ever see the Accra, the city of Accra? Or will they ever know? It's sad that the entire world is just this little place which sees very little development. So you have been there, down there. I work with women in Vigo. You have worked with them. I work with them. So you Not can, I have. You, I work with them You're now. still working with them? Yes. So if someone says that uh, Bridget is the type that can woo voters from uh, tertiary institutions, from uh, the middle class, you won't agree at all? It's not exclusive. It's not exclusive. You're not mutually exclusive. I will win the votes from the tertiary institutions because I mentor the young girls there. Mm. I have a mentoring program which enrolls 40 young girls every, um, every year and pairs them with women, accomplished women, and they mentor them. They go through various programs for about 10 days, and uh, they go out there and do various things, and they go on to mentor other people. So yes, I will, I will um, uh, win their, their votes as well. And I will win the votes from the people at the grassroots as well. It's not mutually exclusive. The middle, everybody's vote, one vote is one vote. Everybody's vote is the same. One vote doesn't weigh more than the other. So you're ready to fly this red color you're wearing? I love red, actually. So from now on, it's going to be red? Possibly, or white. Red and white? Yes. That's the PPP? That is the PPP. Did you for once thought about your party, the PPP, as uh, ability to capture political power when you were perhaps told about running as a vice president? And that is why I joined them. I wanted something to change. And I believe in what the PPP stands for. And that is why I joined the PPP. You fall in line with, I, what, with the ideals. I do. The, the ideals line up with the Ghana I want to see. I want to see the ideals of the PPP. It's, it's just, I want to see education. I want every child educated in Ghana. And that is why I joined the PPP. You know, um, Preventative health. I was one of the people who, who I was one of the people who formed the Clean Ghana Now, mm. and personally went to the Badi Beach and cleaned the beach on a Sunday or one of the holidays. And that is prevent. And if you saw the filth as one of our pleasure beaches, it was heartbreaking. And there is a metropolitan assembly that is in charge of that. Possibly they are overwhelmed, possibly they don't care. A few of them came and joined us clean up the beach at the time. PPP talks about preventative health so that things like cholera and malaria are not killing children on such large scale. That is what we should be concerned about. As this, I mean, they are just mm. known, prevention is better than cure. Education, compulsory education, not just compulsory and you say compulsory and we leave the children to go to school, and whether they are in school or not, we don't, uh, nobody enforces that. It must be enforced. The PPP talks about education police, which I, would, I didn't meet that as a child, right. but it is possible. I have lived in a country where I was sanctioned for not coming to school for one day. And uh, the sanction was not punitive, it was just to make me learn. And that is the kind of thing we need here. So if we are saying compulsory, and by compulsory you think that school feeding program will keep children in school. I've heard about it. They come to school, they take their food, they take it home to share with their families. And that is what keeps them there. It's an incentive for them to come to school, but it's not an incentive for them to learn. So the, the manner in which the PPP is current, that is why 
I want to join, I've joined them. The PPP. Yes. On the day Dr. Indom introduced you to Ghanaians, mm -hmm. you told us to, to vote out the NDC and the NPP. Mm -hmm. Is it because you've joined the PPP, that's why you vote the two parties out? I, I probably know where you're coming from. I've seen this headline that says that I voted the NDC and I wasn't happy. I'm not happy. They have disappointed me, and that is why I, I haven't seen I've, it. Well, that, there's a headline that goes on, and I was thinking about it, and I said yes, but I've voted at NPP two before, and I've voted CPP two before. Mm. I've voted since 1992. I vote because I want a change, and I think that a certain party will give me that change. And anybody who's been voting along the line that I've been voting, I'm asking you to join us. I've made a choice now. I'm asking you to join us in the PPP. Because I tried it all. When Papa Kwesi Ndum was with the CPP, I voted the CPP. Mm. And if you're saying, well, uh, the PPP made only a few, percent, a, a, a few uh, votes last uh, elections, let's remember that those elections went to court. The results went to court. There was a petition against the results. So who knows what happened to all those PPP votes that should have gone where they went. So if you feel that, well, um, I'm disappointed. Indeed, I'm disappointed. I want my country to go or make more of an advance than we are making. Mm. And I'm not seeing it. And it is not because we are not capable. It is because we are not utilizing the resources that we have to, to, to make the advances that we need to make. The PPP and Papa Kwesi Ndong with me we are going to utilize the resources regardless, and I'm talking human resource as well as material, regardless of where you belong, regardless of how you vote, we need to take this country out of uh, the doldrums where it's, go it's going and set it up like the, the, the beacon of hope that it was for Africa. And that's where you're looking at? Yes. The, now, the, the PPP, you're running on, on the ticket of the, uh, the PPP, uh, Dr. Papagosindum is your, uh, your uh, front runner. Does it suggest that perhaps if uh, these two other parties, the NDC or the NPP, had invited you uh, to be part of their uh, uh, government, you wouldn't have accepted it? No, I wouldn't have. Because of the ideology of how things are done? Um... Because I have tried them and I haven't been happy with them. Um, like I said, I've voted a number of times and I voted all of them and I was not happy. You know, it's time that we moved away from mediocrity mm. and went for, I can't call it perfection, but right. we, we, we aim for higher, higher um, uh, ideals or high, higher advancement, you know. I hear people say, um, oh, the NPP is good. Um, they did some good things. Mm. They did better than the NDC. I've heard people say that. And that, oh, yes, uh, there was corruption in the, in the time of the NPP. But, of course, there was development. Or everybody was, was content or satisfied. Or, or things were better. Indeed. But why do we want to qualify things were better, but they were corrupt? Why can't we have it all? Why should we settle? So bring the NPP back. Yes, they were corrupt, but life was better. Mm. Let's say, let life be better without the corruption. And PPP talks about incorruptible leadership. Try it. It's possible. It and that's exists. what they want to offer. Yes. Should we accept the work of the Liberal Commission as it is working now? Or perhaps... Uh, political parties must play uh, a, a, a more uh, key role to it. I think that the, the political parties are working with the Electoral Commission. Mm. The Electoral Commission's, um, the Electoral Commissioner is an appointee of the current government. Mm. Probably the manner in which the appointment uh, is done lends a lot of suspicion and distrust. And that might have to be looked at. And that would go to speaking to the, the Constitution. Appointing the, 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 the chairperson of the EEC. Yes. If that is done, there will be less uh, distrust. Um, 
And we've come to see that now because there's a new electoral commissioner mm -hmm. in an election year. So it's difficult to see um, how uh, independent the electoral commission is of the ruling uh, government. government. So when that is done, that is the beginning. There will be more trust. I think that no matter what, that element of distrust will have to go or will have to be dealt with before the Electoral Commission's work can be a help. Perfected. Otherwise, but each time one party says something, another one is going to bite back and say, no, we don't want it this way, we want it that way, until that element of distrust is removed. There would always be that uh, suspicion. And is that what your party would want to translate into appointing a district municipal uh, metropolitan chief? Yes, and that all goes back to the constitution, uh, the constitutional review and, and the change which mm. has been installed. Indeed, the uh, people must be empowered to elect their own officials. Uh, the um, district uh, chief executives must not be imposed on people and these people just tow their party lines and do what uh, will make their party happy mm. when it doesn't make their electorates or the people in their districts happy. So the people must be empowered to a point where they know that we have put this person in power and if we don't want him, we can change him. What it does is it, help, it holds the executive accountable. Mm. He also knows that, look, if I don't work well, the people will get me out. There will be no suspicion here? Of course not. We voted him in. And it doesn't have to be a party appointee. And you know, and that is why the PPCP, we say we would want to work with an inclusive government. So at the end of the day, if that DCE is uh, an MPP person, an NDC, a PNC, uh, a CPP, we will be required to work with him. Ever since your acceptance as the vice uh, presidential candidate of your, or if, uh, the PPP, have you uh, perhaps been uh, told or heard that perhaps the PPP is a party that is ready for power? And how have the post office? Do you know what a post office is? Yes, I do. Okay. For that, I do. <laughs> so you could buy from the post office and write a letter on. And fold it in on that same sheet. It serves as a, the envelope as well. Write the address of the person on it and post it to the U.S. And that is oh, how okay. we used to. It has po posted post it paid to, already. It has posted okay. paid. So we used to right. post it to uh, various people. Mm. Now, you, you may not know what an airmail letter card is because we have mobile phones and we have um, uh, WhatsApp, for example. If you need to speak to someone in the U.S. right now, you're not going to write a letter on an airmail letter card mm. anyway. And I was saying to her that, you see, we have gone beyond the airmail letter card times, mm. but we are still practicing politics of the airmail letter card times. A whole number of them, the youth, people who were born 1992 and even later, who are eligible to vote now, and we forget. These are the kind of people who are working for the PPP. And that's why you trust them. Yes, we, we cannot be working, even, I mean, I may not be that old, but not, we can't be working for my generation. We should be working thinking about the generation that is coming up. And if we are practicing politics so that they don't have a future, we don't have a Ghana. If you, your part, Vice President Bridget isn't working, what would you be doing? Pardon? We're wrapping up our conversation. If I'm not working, yes, uh, it's a it's a it's a Friday and you're on Saturday. What would Bridget be doing? The yes, smile that comes Bridget. on my face because I haven't had a chance to do that in a, in a few weeks. Well, um, I love to play tennis. Mm. Uh, I'm a member of a Lawn tennis club. So on a Friday, if I'm not working, um, I will go and play tennis. There, there there are two men at the club that I need to beat, so okay. I will go and beat them. And. Um, on Saturday, you know, I there's one thing I love doing. I love going to the markets, and I love Medina Market. It's really chaotic there. You carry your own a, back basket? Uh, no, buy, buy I go. I them? go with someone who helps me. Okay. Um, and they are, they are very lovely people there. The women are they are such nice people, and I've I built a rapport with them. And sometimes I miss them, so I'd like to go there 
and do my marketing. I haven't been in a few weeks mm. also. And then on Saturday, I go to church. I, I'm a member of a Crary church. So okay. on Sunday, I on go Sunday. to church. Yes. And what kind of things do you cook? The favorite ever? I, <laughs> I will be honest. I don't enjoy cooking, but I cook very well. My favorite meal that I cook is palava sauce. Oh, okay. But I love my own. What? Palava sauce with yam. Oh, okay. With yam. So yes. you don't do the fertility? I eat it. You eat it. I, I can do it, but uh, like I said, I've, and you see, this is it. We, we box women into this thing where a woman must cook and a woman <laughs> must. I can cook, but okay. I don't enjoy cooking. You don't enjoy cooking. <laughs> All right. And so, yeah, and uh, if your son is not around you, where would he be? He's being taken care of. He has very good care. Uh, he goes to school when school is in session, and he has very good care. Um, you hope to be um, a grandmother. One and day. One day. My son is 12, and though, so 12, we've got a long uh, way to long go. A long way to go. <laughs> and so when you're a grandmother mm -hmm. and your son comes and says that... Uh, I have uh, a wife. Would you want to look at where that wife is coming from? It doesn't matter. It's the values that matter. Okay. And indeed, this is what one thing we need to work on in this country. Okay. Our values. The outside is, this is what you see. Okay. And it's nice and it's beautiful. But it is what is inside. It's the honesty. It's the truth. It's our values. That is what we need. I'm grateful for your time this morning. Thank you. And she is pairing Dr. Papa Kwesindum into the 2016 elections. She's told you she's a business uh, person and she's already told us that she's already at a grassroots there. And so uh, those of you who are thinking that she is only for the middle class, perhaps you're getting it wrong. Madam Bridget Chukbenuko is the vice presidential uh, hopeful of the Progressive People's Party.